Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another meal prep video. So, if you are new to my channel, you might not know that I do lots of meal prep videos uh, of all kinds, but some of the most popular videos of all time on my channel have been keto meal preps. I try to post about one meal prep video a week, depending on what's going on in our lives at that point in time. Um, about eight months ago, I was doing keto. I'm no longer doing it anymore, and I do have um, kind of a video that explains that and sort of like what diet I follow and all my history with weight loss and everything. I'll link that video down below. But the purpose of today's video is really to show you guys some more options for keto meal prep. Even though I don't follow a keto diet and my husband and my kids don't follow a keto diet, I do try to limit my intake of processed carbs and so there's no reason why I can't make this food and eat it and share it with you. Today I'm going to be making a variety of different things and I'm also going to be doing a giveaway. So one of the companies that I have worked with in the past is Fresh Jacks. They're a spice company and this video is not sponsored by them, but they did offer to do a giveaway on one of my videos. So let me show you some of their spices that I'm gonna be working with today and then just wait till the end of the video and I'll tell you how to enter the giveaway. I'm just gonna show you real quickly these before we get started. I do like this and I've used it quite a bit. This is the Keto Chop House Steak Seasoning, but I've also used it on chicken and pork and it's really got a roasted asparagus too. Uh, citrus pepper, this is really good on fish and salmon. This garlic and herb, I've used this both on roasted vegetables and uh, sauteed chicken. I'm also going to be using today the taco seasoning, which is really good. I'm gonna show you how I make taco meat in my Instant Pot. The Grill Master, I will be using that on some burgers, so you'll see that. Um, I've used this fresh bay seasoning before on fish. It's really good on um, like a white mild fish, like a tilapia, or it's also really good on shrimp. It sort of tastes like Old Bay. And then this is Brunch Life, which is the everything bagel seasoning, which is really good on avocados or eggs. So uh, these are some of the spices that I'm gonna be using today. Okay, let's get started. I'm gonna make these keto strawberry donuts. I'm so excited for these because they look delicious. So for this, you need actually confectioner sugar or swerve, this is the erythritol. I found this in the health market section at my grocery store. So this is actually for the glaze, but for the actual donut part, you'll need the granular swerve or erythritol. You can also get, I think the brand is Sola, makes granular erythritol also. You also need butter, eggs, some uh, baking powder. The recipe calls for unflavored protein powder, but I could not find that in my grocery store, so I'm using this vanilla uh, protein powder instead. And this is um, keto compliant. It has three grams of carbs and three grams of fiber, so zero net carbs. You also need two ounces of cream cheese. I just have a couple ounces left in this container, so I'm gonna use that. Uh, some sugar-free strawberry jello. I know this isn't necessarily clean keto, uh, but when I did keto, I was okay with eating stuff like this once in a while. It didn't really bother my weight loss or anything. Um, almond flour, I got this from Costco. Some sour cream some vanilla some lemon juice and then some strawberries so we're gonna get started on the donuts first i have my donut pans here uh, so we'll bake those cool them and then make the glaze so the first step to making these donuts is to make your strawberry puree so i have 10 strawberries in my nutribullet blender and i'm just adding a couple teaspoons of water and lemon juice to that and then i'm going to puree it until everything is mixed together and it is totally smooth. Uh, if you guys are interested in um, getting the exact Nutribullet that I have, I'm really happy with it. I got it at Costco, but they also have them on Amazon, so I'll link it down below. I wanted to say that for the donut recipe, you can see here that I'm actually adding two spoon or two sticks of butter, which is incorrect. The recipe calls for half a cup of butter, which is actually one stick of butter 
<laughs> and that was a rookie mistake on my part. So I didn't want to trash the footage. I did go ahead and remake these uh, with the correct amount of butter. So you'll see that at the end, but they did turn out really, really good. If you're wanting to make these for meal prep and you don't think that you'll eat them all, um, you know, within five days, I would definitely freeze some of them or keep them in the refrigerator. They did turn out really good and my whole family liked them and I ended up taking the rest to work and everyone there liked them as well, even though most people obviously were not doing keto. So what I did first was basically just whisk all the wet ingredients together. So the melted butter and cream cheese, make sure that when you microwave that, that you don't burn the cream cheese. And then I added the sour cream, vanilla, and erythritol or swerve to the butter and cream cheese mixture and stirred that up well. After this, you can add your dry ingredients. So the almond flour and the um, jello powder and the baking powder. And then after that, you'll stir in the strawberry puree. So just go ahead and stir that up until it is all incorporated. And then we'll add the eggs at the end. So once that's mixed up, you can go ahead and crack your two egg whites into there. I just went ahead and tossed the yolks because I didn't have another use for them at this time. Uh, wiped my hands off and stirred it up really well and that is the batter. So to get this into the donut pans, the easiest way is to use a freezer size Ziploc bag. So I got these Ziploc bag holders on Amazon and they are great for this purpose. They're also great for making freezer meals. They basically just kind of hold your Ziploc bags up so you can pour ingredients out there or in there without any mess. Above the irony of everything I like the way you think and I don't really care about the music on the dance floor. So to get these donuts in the donut pan, you can just cut a uh, little corner off the bottom of the Ziploc bag and then carefully pipe them into the donut pans. I actually think I randomly found these donut pans at Goodwill, but I know they're on Amazon, so I'll link some down below. Um, they're kind of like a single use item, but they're really neat when you need them. So I'm just uh, spraying those with some nonstick cooking spray and then getting the batter in there. There ended up being a little bit more batter than um, there should be because obviously I used an extra stick of butter, but when I made them without the extra stick, they turned out just fine. So you can pop those into the oven and I ended up having to bake them a little bit longer than the original recipe suggested. So just make sure that you check them. Don't over bake them, but definitely make sure that they are cooked through. So when the donuts are cool, you can make the glaze for them. This includes four strawberries, two tablespoons of heavy whipping cream, and two tablespoons of powdered erythritol. I use the Swerve brand, as well as two teaspoons of water. So I just combined all this in my Nutribullet and pureed it up until it was all smooth. And then this will take um, maybe a few hours for the glaze to harden on the donuts, but after they are completely cool, you can drizzle them with the glaze. I did put some wax paper below my cooling racks just to make sure that I didn't get my counter all messy. So for this recipe, I'll be sure to link the original down below. It's from heyketomama.com. This is seriously the closest that you're gonna get to a strawberry donut while you're doing keto. So if you are doing keto, I would totally recommend this. These end up having, uh, let's see, 2.8 net grams of carbs per serving, which is an awesome deal. Okay, so next I'm gonna show you guys how to make a taco salad meal prep. So I have been making taco meat obviously for years as everyone probably has, but ever since I got an Instant Pot, it is definitely my favorite way to make taco meat. If you don't have an Instant Pot, you can totally still use this method and just simmer it for a little bit on the stove. So I'm using three pounds of ground beef because I always like to make sure that I have extras. I am using the Fresh Jack's taco seasoning, which is great because it doesn't have any additives in it. It just has the spices that you need for taco seasoning. Once my ground beef was sauteed on the saute mode, um, I did add some salt and pepper and some dried minced onion. I added the Fresh Jack's taco seasoning along with a couple cups of water. And then all you have to do is cook this on high pressure for about four minutes. Some people People have asked me before why do you cook your taco meat in the instant pot but it makes it so tender and crumbly almost like if you got it from like Taco Bell or some like fast food taco place I don't know I can't explain it but if you have an instant pot I would totally recommend making this method um, 
just to try it. So here are some meal prep boxes that I prepped up for our lunches. I included some guacamole, some salsa, some sour cream, and some lettuce along with the taco meat and some cheese. I'll link these containers that I have down below, but I do really like them. And this is a great keto meal prep for lunch. So since I was going to be making my own chicken salad for meal prep this week, I, did try, I decided to try my hand at some avocado oil mayonnaise. I've never made my own mayonnaise before, so this was a new experience for me. Make sure that you follow the recipe directly as written. I tried to use my regular um, Nutribullet blender for this and it did not work. So you will need an immersion blender. I have also seen recipes that use a food processor, so you can probably look those up as well. So for this recipe, and I'll link it down below, you use a wide mouth mason jar, you put an egg in the bottom, some Dijon mustard, uh, apple cider vinegar, and some salt, and then you carefully pour in your avocado oil over the top, making sure not to disturb the egg. And then you can um, submerge your immersion blender into the bottom of the jar and just start blending until it starts becoming like a white creamy mixture, kind of like obviously mayonnaise. And then at that point, you can move the blender up and down to kind of get it all mixed together. If you don't have an immersion blender, I would actually probably recommend getting one. They're really great for making the Starbucks egg bites. They also work really well for pureeing like sauces and soups and different things like that. I'll link the one I have down below. They're actually not that expensive on Amazon. All right, so here's what the mayo looks like when you're done. I just scooped it out into a bowl. I went ahead and used part of this for the chicken salad and part of it for the ham salad that you will see me make later in the video. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to show you guys is a keto chicken salad recipe from wholesomeyum.com. I'll link the original recipe down below. I seasoned some chicken breast with salt, pepper, um, olive oil, and a little bit of that garlic and herb seasoning from Fresh Jacks. I'm sauteing them in a skillet with a little bit of extra olive oil until they are brown on both sides. Um, it, this The time will depend on how thick your chicken breasts are. You kind of want to just get them golden brown and flip them over. Once you turn them, uh, make sure they're brown on the other side, and then you can remove the lid, reduce the heat to medium low, and pour in a cup of chicken broth. Then you're going to put the lid back on and simmer these for about 10 to 15 minutes until they are cooked through and nice and tender. So this is a quick way that I use to make cooked chicken breast if I'm meal prepping it for like chicken salads or... Um, you know, basically anything that you're going to use cooked chicken for during the week, this works really well for. So you can see the spices are nice and uh, coated on the chicken. I'm just going to put that in the refrigerator. I went ahead and refrigerated this chicken overnight and then the next day I made the chicken salad. So to that bowl, I'm adding some of the mayonnaise that I made along with some Splenda, some lemon juice, and some fresh dill. I did, you know, kind of depart from the original chicken salad recipe just a little bit just because I like adding lemon juice and a little bit of sweetness to mine but you can add whatever you'd like so I'm chopping up the fresh dill and adding that to the dressing as well I always like to mix the dressing in the bowl before I add the dry ingredients because I think it just is so much easier to stir everything up um, with the wet ingredients first to that mixture I also added some salt and pepper a little bit of Dijon mustard and some minced garlic or garlic paste. I also added some fresh parsley as the recipe called for. Um, the recipe also calls for some green onions and I had some of those in the refrigerator so I decided to add those as well. This is something I uh, normally add to my chicken salad. I also normally add celery but I didn't have any fresh celery on hand so it was fine. It all worked out. Once the dressing is all mixed together, um, you can go ahead and add your chicken. So I just took some of the chicken breast and cut it up into as small of pieces as I could without shredding it, and then added that to the mayo mixture and stirred it up really well. See the logic of things. It's quite a lonely world that we're living in. Oh, baby, you are something special, I'm sure. Everything makes total sense. When you're next to me So I love having cooked chicken breast in the refrigerator. 
as an option for meal prep, but if you didn't wanna do that, you could definitely buy a rotisserie chicken and cool it and then use that for the chicken salad. That would be totally fine as well. So I do have one remaining chicken breast, which I will make some Greek salad with later, and I'll show you that, but I took the chicken salad mixture and put it into two glass containers. So these will go in the fridge. This actually tastes better once you've refrigerated it for a day or two, but Adam and I both love taking this to work. Sometimes we just eat it on its own or take it with some cucumber slices or even with some lettuce to wrap it up with like a little wrap or a sandwich. So definitely a great meal prep option. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna show you guys with that chicken breast is a Greek chicken salad. I'm gonna get started first by washing my lettuce. So if you have not watched my videos before or you're new to my channel, I love using my OXO salad spinner to soak my greens in really cold water and lemon juice to clean them off before I spin them dry and use them in my recipes. The salad spinner is available on Amazon and I'll link it down below as well as the chef's knife that I use, but I find that soaking my greens in lemon water not only helps clean them, but it also helps uh, keep them from browning in the fridge as well. So I'm just filling up that salad spinner basket with really cold water. I have my lettuce and lemon juice in there and you can see here how dirty the water is. You guys have to make sure that you wash your produce because it is gross, the amount of dirt <laughs> that comes off of there. So. Once the lettuce is washed, you can go ahead and drain it, rinse it, and then I like to spin it dry, obviously, in the salad spinner. That's what it's intended for. Sometimes I store this in a baggie with a, um, a paper towel, or they do have like produce keepers as well. Um, Rubbermaid makes them. They sell them at Walmart and on Amazon, and those are really great to keep your lettuce fresh as well all week. So um, I'm going to set the lettuce to the side, and then I am slicing up that other chicken breast, and I will assemble my salad. So Greek salads are one of those things that I really look forward to eating during the week. I love taking them to work. Um, they're just so like fresh and healthy and I love all of the flavors in there and I really look forward to eating my lunch when I bring those so into my container and I'm sorry this container is super old I don't have a link to it I am adding some lettuce some grilled chicken some chopped up feta cheese some cucumbers and some red pepper um, I'll also leave a link to the chef's knife that I have in the description box below I get a lot of questions on that too and I love it it's quite an investment but it works really really well um, I added some fresh parsley and some black olives. Um, I'm also going to add some cherry tomatoes, and the dressing that I'm using today is from Aldi. It's a Greek-style dressing, but you could use any dressing that you wanted that fits in with your low-carb lifestyle. If you're doing low-carb, if you're not, you could use any dressing that you wanted. I'm adding some green onions, and I wanted to mention also that it does really help to use fresh feta cheese. So not the kind that's already crumbled, but the kind that you have to crumble yourself because it just tastes so much better um, and it has so much more flavor. I also just wanted to mention quickly these dressing containers that I get on Amazon. I find that they are really awesome to take to work and so I'll link those down below. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna show you guys is how I make my homemade chicken stock. So what I'm showing you right now is some baggies that I took out of my freezer. So I have a whole chicken carcass that I used from a leftover rotisserie chicken, some chicken fat scraps that I had trimmed from chicken breasts. I also have a bag of frozen veggies, so onions, celery, peppers, onions, basically any veggie scraps I have I can make stock out of. I put those in a baggie and I stick them in my freezer. Then when it's time to make stock, I just put everything in my instant pot and cook it on high pressure for 30 minutes, or I'm sorry, 60 minutes after I add water. If you don't have an instant pot, you could totally do this on the stove. I've done it before, but you do wanna simmer it quite a long time so that you can get all of the flavor out of it. So I'm basically just putting all of those meat and veggie scraps into the instant pot. I also put some garlic in there. I had some um, frozen lemons and some parsley. Anything that you really think would give the stock a good flavor, you can add to those bags and just use them um, as you go, as you make the stock. So I poured some cold water over the top. Just make sure not to overfill your Instant Pot. I'm adding some salt, some uh, bay leaf, some garlic, and some peppercorns. And then I just put the lid on and cook that on high pressure for 60 minutes. After it's done, I let it do a natural pressure release so don't release the pressure for about 30 minutes and then this is what it looks like 
after you take the lid off. So nice and dark. I guess you could call this bone broth since you are using the bones from the meat. You could also do the same technique with beef bones. I will strain this into a larger container and put it by the window to cool before I put it in jars. Okay, so I just have a strainer in a large roasting pan in the sink and I'm going to pour that stock over the strainer so that I can get all of the solids out. If a few of the herbs and you know things leak down below, that's fine. I let that sit on the counter for about an hour to cool before I filled my jars. So I always save um, jars, so like spaghetti sauce jars, pickle jars, like any large jars that I get with food in them. I always wash them out and save them, especially for this purpose. I'm using a, um, like a, a measuring cup, a glass measuring cup with a spout, a Pyrex one to um, pour the stock into the jars. Make sure that you leave a couple inches at the top because if you put these in the freezer, they will expand. Um, so I'm just filling those up as best I can. Um, I did end up having to do um, a partial plastic jar, which you'll see here in a little bit, but just get the lids on those and make sure that you label them so that you know that they're chicken stock uh, once you get them frozen in the freezer. All right, so I just jarred up my chicken stock. I have one, two, three, four, five, six jars plus a partial jar. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these into the freezer. You can freeze um, chicken broth like this. You just have to leave part of the jar unfilled so it has room to expand when you freeze it. Okay, so this is kind of a bonus recipe for you guys, these bacon wrapped jalapeno poppers. I wasn't necessarily doing these for meal prep, but I was making them for dinner that night and you can obviously meal prep these. They are fine um, reheated, you know, with a chicken breast or a steak or something like that to take to um, lunch at work or have for lunch during the week. So I decided to go ahead and let you guys know how I make these. They're super simple. I just have some fresh jalapenos from the grocery store. These are really inexpensive. Um, you can get a bunch of them for cheap. So I would totally recommend making this recipe if you haven't before. I have a baking dish that I sprayed with nonstick cooking spray. I cut the jalapenos in half and used a spoon to scoop the seeds out. And then I'm just using an offset spatula to take some cream cheese and spread that in the middle. So I'm using plain cream cheese here. I've tried using uh, pineapple cream cheese before, and if you're not doing low carb, that would be really delicious as well. Um, but I find that plain, plain cream cheese is just as good. So once you get those kind of all filled up, you will take a couple of slices of bacon. I usually cut them in half and try to kind of like stretch out the bacon as much as I can before wrapping them around the peppers. You'll see that once these got cooked, the bacon shrank up quite a bit. And so for some of them, I probably could have used a whole slice of bacon, but just use your own judgment. Obviously extra bacon isn't gonna hurt anyone. I purposely didn't use a lot of bacon because I didn't want them to be super thick and chewy when I cooked them up. So um, the next thing that I'm making for dinner this night is some burgers using the Fresh Jack's Grill Master seasoning. This wasn't necessarily a meal prep, but I wanted to show it to you guys because it's what I was making for dinner on this particular evening. And it could definitely be used as a meal prep too. So I have a pound of ground beef in my bowl. I went ahead and added some of that Grill Master seasoning along with some Worc Worcestershire sauce and some garlic paste. I mix that up really well. And then I'm just forming that into patties using my hands. I like to usually form three patties out of one pound. You could do four, but these shrink up a little bit. So usually I get three patties per pound of ground meat. Okay, so here's what the jalapeno poppers look like once they're baked. I just put them in a 400 degree oven. You can just cook them until the jalapenos are tender and the bacon is cooked. And then here's what I had for dinner on this night. So basically a burger with all the fixings on a bed of lettuce and the jalapeno poppers. Okay, so washing berries. Um, if you guys are new to my channel, I just wanted to kind of explain my method for washing produce. So I use my OXO salad spinner. I put the produce in there and just fill it up with really cold water and then I put in a little bit of white vinegar. This is how I've always washed my produce. Um, I love doing it like this. It makes it so easy, especially with the salad spinner. If you prep a lot of produce, I would totally recommend <laughs> this particular salad spinner. I get so much use out of it, it's not even funny. Um, once the berries soak for about 10 minutes, I just rinse them off, put them in a shallow container with a 
um, paper towel and then those are ready for us to use for the week. So we use these for snacks and desserts. You could serve them with a little bit of whipped cream for a dessert and my kids also love taking them in their lunches um, for the week as well. So this next recipe is for ham and cheese egg bites and this is definitely my most favorite meal prep uh, recipe for breakfast and I will link the original recipe down below. This recipe is normally for use in an instant pot but you can see here that I'm actually going to make these in the oven and they turned out just as good if you don't have an instant pot. So to a bowl with a spout I am adding my eggs, um, some um, cottage cheese, some half and half, salt, pepper, and a little bit of hot sauce along with some shredded cheese. Next, you'll take your immersion blender and just blend that up until everything is really combined and well mixed. I have talked to some people that have skipped that step. Personally, I do it, but I have talked to people who have just whisked it up and it, work, it works out just fine. So um, into this, you can basically add any different toppings that you want or meats and cheeses. So I had some leftover baked ham that I'm using in this. So I'm just trying to chop this up into as small of pieces as I can, giving a little bit to Murphy. I want to make sure you guys know that he's not neglected. He gets plenty <laughs> of table scraps. Um, and then I'm also going to chop up a little bit of green onion as well, just because I always like that flavor in my egg bites. You can definitely play around with these and, you know, you can do bacon or sausage, any kind of cheese you want. If you're vegetarian, you could definitely do like spinach and mushroom or artichokes or anything that you want to do. So I am going to go ahead and use the egg bite molds. Um, I'll link these down below, but they are available on Amazon. They work fine in the oven, but they also work in the instant pot too. So either way I make these, I always put the solid ingredients in the bottom. So I just sprinkle a little bit of the ham and green onion in the bottom of the molds and then pour the egg mixture over the top. If you don't have these, don't worry, you can totally use muffin tins. I have used them many times and it works out just fine. Um, I did have a little bit extra egg mixture, so I went ahead and just used two of the silicone baking cups. I get these on Amazon as well and I can link them down below. They're super awesome for either you know cupcakes or muffins or recipes like this. So once those are assembled, I do go ahead and sprinkle some extra shredded cheese over the top and pop those in the oven. Follow the directions if you're using the Instant Pot recipe, but if you're not using the Instant Pot recipe, I bake those at 400 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, I had to bake these a little bit longer just to make sure that they were done in the middle, but here's what they turned out like. I have eaten these several times for breakfast this week, and they are totally delicious. I love these, and I make them all the time and would totally recommend them for breakfast prep. Okay, so the last thing that I'm going to show you guys is a ham salad snack box. I just did this because I had some leftover chopped ham from the egg bites. So you can see that I chopped that up fine and put it in a bowl along with the rest of the green onions. I'm going to chop up some uh, cornichons from Trader Joe's. You could also use dill pickles or any kind of pickles that you wanted. If you guys have never had ham salad, it's basically like deviled ham is I think what they call it in the South. Um, it's also basically just like a tuna or a chicken salad except made with ham. It's totally delicious. I would recommend you trying it if you have it and you like ham. So to that mixture, I just added a little bit extra of that homemade mayo that I made before along with some um, freshly ground black pepper. The thing with ham salad is that you usually don't have to add salt to it because the ham is really salty. Um, to this glass bento box, I am adding the ham salad along with some sliced cucumber. Um, I did get these glass bento boxes on Amazon and I will be sure to link them down below. To the boxes, I'm also adding some cubed cheddar cheese. This is the unexpected cheddar cheese from Trader Joe's along with a few cashews. I know that cashews are a little bit higher in carbs, but when I was doing keto, it never bothered me too much to have these on my menu plan. So here are the completed snack boxes. You could definitely do this with chicken salad or tuna salad as well. So just the salad, the sliced cucumber, and uh, nuts and cheese. Okay, so that completes today's meal prep video. Uh, to enter the giveaway to um, win my favorite spices from Fresh Jacks, leave a comment down below telling me what recipe was the favorite one that I made for you today or which one you would like to try. So thanks again for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.